hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part two of our Apache attack helicopter build. Well, as I said at the end of last week's show, I'm going to be changing the format a little bit. I want to move this build on a little quicker. Um, I think what happened last week is I really wanted to show the process of that complicated piece of the body, or the pieces, the two halves, and it ate up half of a show. Um, if we went along like that with the entire build, this show would be 25, 30 episodes long. And I honestly don't think any of you would want to tune in for that. So we're going to move it along and carry on with, uh, well, continuing with the body. Well, the first pieces that we're going to start with on today's show are going to be the lower body supports. And what this is, it's the mounting brackets for the front end landing gear or the wheels in the front end of the Apache. Now, you need to make two of these and any time during a model that I require to make multiple uh, pieces that are the same, I prefer to make a template. I know that there are some that would rather just photocopy the pattern twice, slap it on a piece of wood, and then just make two of them, but I prefer the template. Now this accomplishes a couple things. For one thing, it gives you the opportunity to do a test cut on the pattern to see what the best method would be to cut the odd shape. And in my case, I've decided that the table saw will take the main brunt of the work, the scroll saw will cut almost up to the lines, and a belt sander will finish it off. The important thing to remember, though, is that in this piece, there are holes to drill, and in particular, there is an angled hole. And while you have your stock cut in its final dimension, uh, in this case one half inch by three quarters by six and three quarters long, this is the time you want to be drilling your angled holes and routing all of your accent grooves, mainly because you'll have square reference edges. So I prefer to lay out all the marks individually on the pieces instead of relying on the pattern. In this case, we require a left and a right, which means that one is completely opposite of the other, and the patterns are usually only provided in one view. So it's up to you to reverse them. If you make two just according to the pattern, you made two lefts or two rights. So hence why I prefer to do it manually. So this piece is not that crazy. It's just a matter of routing out the 1 16th inch curves using the incra fence on the, writer, on the router table with a depth stop. And of course, uh, that will ensure me to get accuracy and repeatability. So even if I mess up and my kerf is off a little bit, at least it'll be off on both pieces and identical on both pieces, and chances are you won't notice it. So it's a matter of drilling and marking out and making these two pieces and getting them ready to assemble. When it comes to drilling the angled holes that you require for this piece, don't get all in a panic when you don't have some kind of fancy jig or some kind of fancy tilting drill press. All I've done is used a scrap piece of pine and cut it to the angle that I need the hole to be. And from there, by setting the depth stop of our drill press, I'm able to use a stop lock on either side to wedge my piece in and drill a perfect hole exactly where it needs to be. And after all of that, we end up with two pieces that are like this and they are identical. So what do we do with them? Well, we're gonna glue them on the body. At this point, we're not gonna bother installing the wheel assembly only because we want to keep as much solid surface here as we can so that we can still clamp things together and we don't want it resting on two little wheels trying to finagle other pieces on here. So I'm gonna mount these parts using a square, as always, to line things up, glue them in place, and clean up the squeeze out. Just to point it out, guys, these two pieces, this represents two hours work. So don't be in a rush. Take your time, and you will be so happy with the results. 
Well, the next two pieces I've decided to make are the tail wing and the tail body. And it's just a simple process of using some spray adhesive, letting it tack up for three minutes and then adhering it to the proper thicknesses and sizes of wood. Now, for the tail body, you want to utilize the edges of the board as much as you can for straight edges. With something like the tail wing, it is an odd shape. So I have um, placed a center line on our board to help us get things aligned. From there, you can actually cut the notches in the tail wing using your miter fence and the table saw. Um, as well as the angles of your tail body can also be cut on the table saw. The rest of the shaping on the tail wing will be done roughly with the scroll saw and then from there we're going to sand up to the line on the belt sander. The 1 16th inch groove details once we get everything sanded up, we'll set the fence on the router table and we can run those on both sides of the tail wing. Most of the shaping of these, however, due to the size uh, of our pieces, uh, really has to be done by hand sanding. It's not really safe to get in there that close with a piece this small. And although we could do it with some double-sided tape and a smaller piece of wood like we did before, um, the resistance of this piece on the sander, chances are it would tear away from the double-sided tape before we ever got it shaped. Before I can mount the tail wing and the tail body to the body of the helicopter, there's a couple pieces that we need to make, and that would be the top body frame and the tail base. Smaller, simple pieces, again, utilizing the ink fence and the router table, use as many flat surfaces as we can, and extending the smaller pieces uh, with double-sided tape to make them safe to do on the larger belt sander. Well, taking a break from the tail of the helicopter, uh, I'm going to move on to doing the seats and the lower gun subassembly. There's really nothing special here. It's just a matter of following the dimensions and the patterns that are provided in the prints, gluing them up onto your stock, cutting them either at the table saw um, to get your square edges and then finishing them off with the scroll saw, a little bit of glue and assembly, and it doesn't take too long to get that entire seat uh, and lower gun area completely assembled. And with the cockpit seating and the front gun assembled, we can just glue the assembly into our helicopter. And once you're happy with its position, make sure, as always, getting get inside and clean up any squeeze out that came into the cockpit. Well, I figure I might as well carry on and make the uh, cab sides or the cockpit sides. So because we need a left and a right, I've cut a template from a piece of MDF and I've angled the bottom of the board 10 degrees. I'm going to make these a little bigger than normal, tracing them out and then cutting them on the scroll saw. And from there, we will fine tune them to get them to fit exactly in place where we need them. Before we finish the final shaping of the cab sides, um, I want to get the rear panels and the rest of the interior of the cockpit finished. It's nothing special. We're just going to do some careful measuring drawn out on pre-cut blanks here that I've cut um, according to the plan dimensions. Careful shaping and then fit them into place. Uh, that's all there is to it on these pieces. They're fairly simple pieces to cut. Nothing uh, out of the ordinary here. Well, there will be times in the build where things don't work out exactly as you would have planned. And that's the case here with this rear panel. This panel is supposed to go right in behind my rear seat here. But unfortunately, um, what's happened is I have glued the bottom assembly and the seat a little too close to the upright of the cockpit. So this is not the time to panic. This is the time to adapt and overcome. 
and all I'm going to do is very carefully using the sandpaper mounted to the MDF, I'm just going to continue to work at this, slowly reducing the thickness of this piece until it finally fits in behind that seat. So it's nothing to worry about. It's inevitable when you're making small pieces like this uh, with zero instructions. You're kind of just deciding how you want to glue things together as you go. So don't worry about it. Just fix it and carry on. Oh, and for the record, if I didn't tell you I messed this up, you'd never know I did by the time I get it glued into the model. Although we're not completely done the cockpit, we still have the spacers to do along the top edge. Uh, there's not much we can do with this. We have to leave it and let it fully set up and fully dry in order to work on it because we still have to shape this top edge which will be done uh, by hand using our little shop made uh, sanding files. So I'm going to leave this alone and we're going to move on to making a few other pieces. The first one being the main rotor base. Now the main rotor base is not a piece that really requires a pattern. Um, all we have to do here is just carefully measure it out and cut it. There is some shaping to do on the belt sander, but nothing drastic. The one tricky part here is the 1 16th recess. And for that, I would suggest making a template using a guide bushing and routing it out to get the perfect results of that that you'd want to see on your model. Um, other than that, again, this piece is really not that difficult to do as long as you take your time. We now need to trim off the top of this. And in this case, one of the best ways you can do it is with your sandpaper mounted to the MDF. With some careful shaping and some careful filing, I guess we'll call it, with these sanding strips that we've made, you can get some really fine results and it looks great. So just take your time, there's no rush, just one piece at a time and sand as you need. Remember, if you want those crisp edges, you need something like this. Now that we have our main rotor plate made, we can glue that in place as well. And I'll just add some clamps to that. I've decided to move on to the wings of the helicopter. And for the wings, I've made some templates. And not for the wing shapes themselves, as they're fairly basic but it will be for the wing profile and as well the weapon support block, which is kind of a funny little piece. Um, the weapon support block requires the front edge to have a round over on it, and it is much easier to cut that round over first on the edge of a board and then cut the pieces out after the round over instead of trying to round over that small little piece. This template for the profile of the wings is nothing more than an easy way to assist me in marking out that profile so that it's much easier for me to shape this thing uh, on the sander. Now the missile supports are a little trickier and it's not that they're difficult to make, it's just that you need to think about the process. The first step that you want to do is you want to drill the holes. From there, using the dimensions that you find on the prints, you want to rip this piece part way through about an inch deep again at the 3 16ths of an inch mark. That will give you the final dimension. From there, you want to rip the width, which will be three quarters, and then it's just a matter of placing in a cross-cut blade in your table saw 
I'm cutting each piece to a one inch length. Now when you're gluing together the pieces of the uh, missile holder or missile bracket, don't be afraid to use a straight edge to help you align the edges. The more you can free up your hands during these builds, the better it is uh, and the better quality model you're going to get. So don't be afraid to use that straight edge to help you. As well, when you glue the second piece on here, don't be afraid to cut a couple extra of these little pieces to sit in between here as a spacer so that it all holds together properly. Well, the rocket launchers can just be turned out of some scrap poplar like what I've done here. If you don't have scrap poplar or if you don't have a lathe, more importantly, you can easily use half inch dowels and just file these 1 16th inch grooves into it. So I'm going to glue this to the wing assembly and then I'll show you what we're uh, where we're at so far. Well, this is pretty much where we're at at this point in time. And now it's time to make the missiles that'll go on it. Now, I don't like the way that the pattern does the missiles, so I'm going to do my own way. And what I've done is I've just turned the missile shape and I've made this little jig out of cherry. And what that will allow me to do is insert a missile in here, just like this. Get it in all the way until it's flush to the end of the jig. And once it's flush, I'll put a clamp on this and then I'll use the scroll saw to cut crosshairs in this sort of thing so that we can get the wings of the missiles in there. Um, it's a tedious process, but I think it'll make a huge difference as far as how the missiles look. So I'm going to cut all of those and then we'll get them assembled. And unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this week. There's many hours that go into the progress that we've got so far, and there's a lot more to come. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. Guys, I hope you're enjoying this series. I, I hope it gives you some kind of an insight as to what happens during these model builds. I also hope that it's going to inspire you to try your own. And as well, I hope you're going to join me again next week when we continue this series and I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.